So what's going on everybody? Adam Neely with Build, Guild, and Refine TV. Coming back at you with another episode. Check it, check it, check one, two, check one, two. Back at it again with another cabinet video. We are doing another kitchen remodel here. Now, if you go take a look at this video here, okay? That's our initial cabinet refinishing video. It's like our fun how-to, but it's gaining some steam. All right, so here, what we're doing is we're refinishing all these cabinets. We are actually doing a hardware change. We are tiling the backsplash here, as you'll see. Custom cabinetry. We did some custom cabinetry work. Whoever installed the flooring laid a whole nother layer of subflooring on top of the existing subflooring which does what? Raises the floor height. Now that caused the dishwasher to be unable to be taken in and out because of the height of the floor. So basically what we did was we increased the height of the lower cabinet boxes by one inch so that in the future, if there are any problems with the dishwasher, it can be taken in and out. So we've already actually gotten a lot of work done here uh, because we've been so busy because there's a time crunch. This job needs to get done before Thanksgiving and we're working it in and out of other jobs so in out it's been it's been, uh, it's been challenging okay but let's take a look installed this crown molding did a really poor job and left a lot of gaps. A lot of gaps. And their miter cuts have, were pretty poor. And so MC Chatter, being the master carpenter that he is, that I am, fixed all the crown molding. Hmm. The new sink and the new faucet. Now I've already gotten pretty far in the tile. You'll see what we decided to do here was frame out the edge so that it matches all, right. all the way around in the corner, okay? So the way that we like to do it is we like to remove that sill, that lower sill, and tile underneath it. And then do a little piece of trim right there to kind of cap it off. Some of the outlets were added in later and they weren't actually installed properly. The boxes were basically just floating in the hole. And it's not good to be floating in the hole. So I wanna say a little something about preparation because preparation is key to everything in life, right? But when you are doing a multi-stage project like this where you have different layers that have to be done at different times, the first step is clearly the most important because everything after that first step follows the quality of the first step. So for us, it was so important to make sure that no matter what, this height that we raised matched perfectly, blended seamlessly. So because we made sure that raising the boxes was perfectly level, the countertop installers were able to install the counters perfectly level. And now that means that my tile can be perfectly level from my first run. I know that that's the piece being removed. So when I'm getting ready to make a difficult cut, I wanna make sure that I use my hands on my table as a guide and as support to make sure that they don't slip. And heard about a lot of people that have actually cut fingers off or cut fingers with these wet saws, with these tile saws. So you wanna make sure that no matter what, your hands are braced on the table as you're moving the table. So that if there's a slippage, your hands are gonna go away from the blade rather than into the blade. This 
piece was going in a place that would be visible, I would make sure to file that cut and keep it clean. But it's not. It's going to be hidden by the outlet cover, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you notice, I was able to use the table saw to file that a little cleaner. Now there's nothing worse for a tile helper than to make a really tough cut and have it break on you. And that happens all the time. So be careful when you're handling your smaller cuts. So our main tool for sanding cabinets is the RO150, the Rotex 150 by Fest Tool. Backsplashes is one of the hardest jobs because you're actually you don't get to support yourself like you do on a floor. Here it's all in your core, right? So a lot of people ask me why I work out. Well, this is why I work out. If you're holding yourself up at your core the whole time. You can't always lean up against the counter, so you have to hold yourself up and balance yourself. That's kind of the only way that you can free your hands and your arms so you can move quickly. See this extension here? This one inch extension that we add onto the top of the <laughs> cabinet boxes. It's seamless, through, just through sanding. Just by the way that we installed it, we made sure that it was completely flush with the cabinet. So it is literally now part of the cabinet. We used a heavy duty wood glue, we used nails, and we screws. used screws. Trim nails. Trim nails. And or brads, if you will. So we glued, screwed, and nailed it. So it's in there, it's in there good. And actually once we pop a little wood filler on that little seam, it will literally be seamless and part of the cabinet. All right? Tell we roll, tell we roll. So that wraps up the day. This is technically day three, I guess. First day we were here, we just took all the doors and drawers out of here. First couple of hours. For just really. a couple hours. And then we took off and then we went to another job site. Day two we got here and that's when we built up the cabinet bases. Mm -hmm. We added the extension on there and we prepped it for the countertops. Ripped the counters out. That's and, right. And then did that. That's right. We removed the existing countertops, the old countertops and prep them for the new countertops that were installed. The countertops look great, they are beautiful, great selection, and perfectly installed, which makes us very happy. Yeah. So we did our job right in prepping for the installation. They did jo their job really well in installing, and that made setting tile that much easier. That much easier, yeah. and that that'll make you know prepping and painting that much easier as well. 
So if you, again, watch this cabinet video, I'm going to link it again. Check it out because it shows you our process step by step. We degrease first. Degrease first before you sand. Degrease. Why? Because if you just sand, then you are actually just smashing that grease into the grain, especially if they're oak cabinets. So degrease first with the scrubber. Get it all out of there. Degrease. Bam, number one. And number two is sand, okay? Sand, sand, sand. Um, hit with different uh, different grits depending on your sander. You know, maybe start with a 100, then go to a 150, and then a 200. Uh, so you finish off with a nice, fine, fine finish. Unless the homeowner wants to see more grain. And if they want to see more grain, then that's great. A lot of them do. They want to show that they're real wood cabinets. Mm -hmm. So they want to show the grain. So if that's the case, then you don't have to do a three-step sanding. You only need to do a one-step sanding. Do like a 150, a general 150, yeah. uh, but make sure it's nice and smooth and even. I've seen lots of gouges from where the sander gets away from people. Right? So do that one-step sanding. Uh, then after you're sanded, then you use your paint prep, which you'll see the liquid that we use. We use a special commercial-grade paint prep. Uh, but you can get the best paint prep possible from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your big box store is. But use the high-end commercial-grade paint prep because a lot of the cheap stuff leaves a residue. Um, I don't think everybody knows that, but some of the cheaper paint preps leave a residue in a film. All right, so use the good one. Then after that, let it dry. Make sure it's completely dry. Now you start your primer. Primer coat, sometimes two coats if you need it. Then you can do like a nice light scuff with a 3M cloth. Scuff them up and get them prepped for your paint. You don't want to sand them. You don't need to sand them usually. Um, you can just scuff them up and hit them with a nice little uh, light 3M cloth. And then you're ready for paint. Lay your paint. Two coats of a good paint. We'll get there. So that's it for today. We're wrapping up. We'll see you next time. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having as great of a morning as we are. We're heading back to this cabinet refinishing job slash kitchen remodel job slash... I don't know. What else? I don't know. We're just doing a lot of little stuff. We're doing a lot of uh, miscellaneous uh, little items here. We're going to swing by our local big box uh, supply store here, grab some grout, grab some wood filler, and grab a few other smaller items that we need to start our day. Day three. Thursday. Day three. Day three back at this kitchen refinishing job. We've got a little bit more tile to wrap up. We're going to grab the tile. chowder has got a little bit more sanding to do. And he's going to prep all the boxes with the paint prep. We'll show you that process. And next comes primer. we got to get moving because we're on a time crunch. Time crunch. We're Thanksgiving. Time crunch. Thanks. We've got a lot of work to do in a very little bit of time. All right. We're rolling. Now when you have to put your adhesive on the back of the tile, it's called back buttering. So we back butter to make sure we have a pretty consistent amount of uh, adhesion on the back, whether you're using thin set or mastic. That's it. Pretend to put a little bit on. All right, so real briefly, I'm gonna talk about the word mastic. When I say the word mastic, what I mean is a general tile adhesive. It's more like a caulk, more like a, um, look at that. Now mastic is, is a non-cement based adhesive. Now I only use mastic on walls. I, will, I have never and will never use mastic on the floor because anytime there's pooling water, mastic can fail. It actually soaks up the water. Whereas your thin set, your cement based thin sets will not absorb water. So as long as there's no pooling water, mastic is phenomenal. It's easier to use for walls. Um, it, it, when you put it on the wall, it stays on the wall. Whereas a lot of thin sets have a hard time just kind of drooping. You have to have the perfect consistency so that it doesn't droop, okay? So mastic is what I use for all my backsplashes, for shower walls, as long as you have a good adhesion, okay? And no puddling water.
Powder's doing right now is probably the most important part of this entire process. Because after you've degreased and after you've sanded, you have to get off all of the residue, all of the debris, all of the sawdust with a good paint prep. And if you don't, then everything you did before that will be for nothing because your paint is not going to adhere to the surface properly and it's going to start peeling in a year. joke that it's a good day when you don't get hurt <laughs> but uh that rarely happens we usually get hurt one way or another all right guys and gals guys and dolls Ladies and gentlemen, okay, you've got your primer coat is done. We use the BIN uh, as we usually use. It's a shellac based primer, it goes on smoothly, it covers really nice, nicely, excuse me. So tomorrow we'll be back and we'll be putting paint on the boxes. Backsplash is all done. Later. So I want to wrap this video up and fill in some areas that may be missed or a little gray for you. With cabinet refinishing, there are dozens of ways to do this. Now there are lots of ways that are easier at home, easier to DIY, and there are other ways that contractors miss or purposely skip steps to save money. Many of those methods may work for a little while, but are they actually going to hold up to normal wear and tear? And I don't even mean abnormal abuse, and I just mean daily use. The answer is no, these methods will not hold up. You've got to degrease first. I know a lot of people at home and contractors that skip that step. The problem with that is that's your first step. And just like you saw in the video when I said that the first step sets the quality for the rest of the job, whether you degrease or not is important. And I've heard a lot of people say that it doesn't matter, but it does. And I can tell you this from years of experience. And I can tell you confidently that the method that we have shown in this video especially which is the same method we're doing in this video, holds up for a minimum of 10 years. Now, which method you choose may depend on your time, your budget, your capabilities, um, your availabilities, contractors around you, who knows. But if you stick to this method, your finish will last, and it will last very well, and it will look good. I can't even tell you how many times I've gone into a kitchen and the finish has been failing in, in just a year. So follow this method. Now this is video one in a two-part video. We're trying to fit in a lot more information in this video than in our other cabinet refinishing video because this is also a kitchen renovation on a budget. Now maybe you're watching this and thinking, wow, that's a full kitchen renovation. But for us, it's really not. We left the floors intact. We didn't go down to the studs. We didn't remove any cabinets. We're just refinishing and painting the cabinets. We're just installing the backsplash. I would call this a kitchen refacing, more of a cosmetic upgrade because we're not doing any of the major overhaul items such as flooring or reformatting the layout. But you'd be floored walking through this kitchen and seeing how different it feels and looks just based on what we've done here. Now in part two, you'll actually get to see where everything comes alive. So again, this is part one. Keep an eye out for part two, and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one.